So Africa's energy transition is primarily about development. Um, we're building from a very low baseline of um, energy consumption. So the average African, even in the major economies like Nigeria, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, consume about 200 uh, kilowatt hours of electricity per year. This is about as much as it takes to power a refrigerator. Um, and so this is, we're starting from such a low energy consumption baseline, um, which means that we don't have um, productive uh, uses of energy in our, in our economies, which means then that we don't have um, industries and companies that are providing opportunities for people. And so we need power, power delivered to power productive centers that will give people jobs and opportunity and, and spur development. And so energy transition, when you think about Africa, it's not about decarbonizing because there's nothing to decarbonize. We have no energy sector to speak of. It's about building opportunity and doing that in a sustainable way in the long term. So net zero is a meaningless concept for Africa unless we have three things. One is an Africa-led agenda in terms of what the energy transition means for us. What are we trying to accomplish? You know, and so for us, I think um, in many rich countries, the transition is about decarbonizing an already quite large energy system that is quite polluting. In Africa, we're starting from a low baseline. And so there's, you know, we're not trying to move from one system into another. We're trying to build a new system. Um, and so obviously this has to be a green system in the long term. We want our future energy system to be, system to be robust um, and to be low carbon. And so there's this long horizon zero emissions play, but in the short term, we need to be building our energy systems up, which will be a relative increase, modest in the grand scheme, but there has to be a little bit of emissions growth just to power our, um, our development goals in the short term. Um, and so for us, one, we need to start thinking about the goals quite differently for Africa, that our goal is to build a low carbon system, but this is a kind of long transition play. The second thing is the concept is meaningless because we have such poor understanding of the realities on the ground. We have really limited data about what the energy system looks like in Africa, what our needs are. They're just massive data gaps. And central to net zero um, and the net zero concept is creating the scenario pathways and modeling future kind of options for what your energy system will look like in the long term. Um, in rich countries, you have really rich data ecosystems. You have strong, robust modeling communities that are creating all of these different scenarios about, okay, fine, if this is our goals are to our economies to go by this and that, um, this is what our energy mix will look like at this horizon, 2050 or 2030 or whatever. And you build it out with a lot of granular detail. And obviously these are just scenarios. They're not you know predictions about the future, but it really helps you kind of focus uh, investment policy around the kind of future you're trying to create. Um, and, and, and that kind of operationalizes a net zero concept. In African countries, we can't do that because we don't have the data, we don't have the models, we don't have the expertise um, local that can start to build those visions. Um, and, and this is especially important because we're starting from such a low baseline that we're having to create something out of nothing. And so this experimentation and the modeling and with the data is so important to help us guide, guide our sense of where we're headed. And so without that data, without that technical underpinning, you know, you could go to the COP and make a pledge that we'll be net zero at this time, or this is our NDC and this is what we commit to do. But what, what is that based on? What is that evidence base? And is that, is, is that, is that um, evidence base shaped also by your priorities, by your agenda, by what you're trying to achieve? Do you have a clear sense of that? And so I think symbolically and in broad terms, yes, uh, you know, the world needs to go to net zero and Africa is part of that global future. The details of how we get there and how we prescribe that path around our priorities and our needs is what the big question mark is and is what makes this concept quite meaningless. So looking ahead to COP27, what I would like to see, um, especially this being the kind of quote unquote African COP, um, I just like to see African nations band together and start to work on constructive solutions um, amongst each other because, you know, we've been showing up to cop after cop after cop, making the same demands, uh, drawing attention to the hypocrisy of the polluters, to the lack of kind of, um, um, to rich countries not meeting their finance goals. And it's the same track over and over again. 
do this, do that, you know, and, and um, it's becoming increasingly um, obvious that these pledges are not being met or will not be met at the scale that is required. Obviously, symbolically, we need to continue to advocate for this. Uh, uh, you know, I think that the moral case is strong, but behind that, I would like to see African countries say, okay, fine, we'll keep the symbolic pressure on, but, you know, we need to get down to brass tacks. We need to, you know, find constructive solutions. Just showing up to the COP year after year after year, saying we need finance, we need this, we need this, is not getting us anywhere. Um, and, you know, the crisis is growing. Our populations are very vulnerable to climate impact. And so what are we going to do about it? What concrete steps can we take? What partnerships can we build amongst each other? Which ways can we bring development partners in constructively to solve specific questions that is outside of the realm of this kind of vague pledges or vague calls for pledges to be met?